The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I literally just woke up, and I'm just talking boxing straight straight out of sleep, straight out straight out straight out the bed, talking boxing. I got my gym bag on right now. We headed to the boxing gym to get this work in. You know what I'm saying? It's very important. It's very important. We uh continue to. You know, exercise and stay disciplined going into 2021. But listen, I'm excited to make these type of videos. I'm excited to make this type of video because, you know, it's it's always a great thing when we get these big fights made. You know, we, we don't have to talk about who's the A side, who's getting what percentage of this per split uh, or any of that kind of nonsense. Uh, you, you know, I love the I love when we get big fights made that I want to see so we can talk about what we came here to talk about, which is the sport of boxing. Now, March 13th. You know, as far as I'm concerned, and yes, this, this might be a very biased statement, but I'm, a very, I'm very excited for this fight. Um, the fight of the year, the fight of the year, March 13th, Roman Chalatito Gonzalez takes on Gaia Estrada, Juan Francisco Estrada. The WBA and WBC Super Flyweight titles will both be on the, be on the line in this fight, so it's, it's of massive importance, and it's a rematch to what was a, for a fight that was a, a classic in 2012. So, you know, it's rare you get two fighters that eight years on are still on top in a new weight class and the rematch is just as exciting as the first fight so this video is going to be how does roman chalatito gonzalez do it again how does he how does he defeat a a, a more mature better version of guy Estrada, a more self-assured version of guy Estrada, a guy Estrada that's picked up wins against quadras twice wrong versailles uh, Brian Valoria. I mean, this is this, 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 this. You would have to believe that this version of Gael Estrada is mentally a better, more sound person going into the ring than the, than the youngin that fought Chalatito in the first fight uh, when Chalatito was in his prime. Now, when we talk about Gael Estrada, we're talking about one of the best counter punchers in the sport of boxing. I think there's an argument to be made. He might be the best counter puncher in the sport of boxing. He's that damn good. He is Gael Estrada. But when we talk about Roman Gonzalez, Chalatito, aka the real TBU, we have to highlight what are his strengths, okay? And the way I would classify Chalatito's style is that he is an offensive defensive fighter. His offense is his defense, and his offense is very well executed in an intelligent manner because he's always on balance. He shifts the weight. Whether whether he shifts going straight or shifts going side to side, the weight of his punches and and, and, and the way he shifts his, sh shifts the weight of, of of his feet is second to none in boxing. I, I recommend any of you young fighters out there if you're looking to if you're looking for, fi for fighters with balance who are throwing a lot of punches and, and doing it in a responsible way. He's the guy you want to watch. Um, I don't think much changes for him in this fight. I I, I really don't. I think you know even though Guy Ostrada is better, even though Guy Ostrada is a more mature version of himself. I think Chalatito needs to just continue to do what he did in the first fight, you know, and how, how to do in the first fight. He won the first fight because Gaia Estrada was trying to be the more economical fighter in there, you know. He was trying to pick his shots. He was trying to uh, be very accurate, and, and, and that's who he is. He's, he's a very accurate fighter. Now, he can, he has shown since that fight that if need be, he can dig down deep in those trenches and, and mix it up with you. But at his core, he is a he is a classic counter punching, uh, elite level counter punching boxer. That's, that's what he is, and um, I, I you know Chalatito isn't exactly uh, the guy he was in 2012. You know he isn't in his prime anymore. We know that. We acknowledge that here on True School Sports. But he still does a lot of the same things at a, at a high level that he did back in that fight. He still uh, can, can can make you fight when you don't want to fight. He can still get that lead foot leverage, as we call it here on True School Sports. And if you don't know what lead foot leverage is, it's when your lead foot is in the dominant position to land the punches that you're throwing. So like, if you're this is an orthodox orthodox matchup so your lead foot would be your, your left foot so you're, you're, you're trying to get that left foot on the inside foot of the other person's uh the opponent's left foot and Chalatito does a great job of, of of always having his feet in position to to do damage to hurt you to hit you you see what i'm saying and, and, and that's what's made him so effective over the years that's one of the, the subtleties that make him such a tough fighter to beat varying the speed of his punches um 
You know, Guy Estrada in this fight is going to have to hit Chalatita to get his respect. Because if he can't back him up, he can't beat him. So I, I feel like the only thing I would say is a bit different about this fight going in. Because, you know, when Chalatito fought Guy Estrada the first time, he was trained by his lifelong trainer, Arnufo Obando, who passed away in 2016. R.I.P. Arnufo Obando, great, great trainer. Um... The only thing that's changed since he, in my opinion, is just from watching him, the only thing that's really changed about Chalatito subtly, and this is, this, is, this is a subtle change, is ever since he got with Marcos Caballero, his new trainer that he's had for about three or four fights, I think the straight right hand has become a bit more of a focal point. He's always had a good straight right hand. It's always been a punch that's, that's worked for him. Um, it's always been one of his better punches, but I feel like ever since he got with Caballero, it's been a punch that's been, that's been a, a, a bigger focal point of his uh, offensive focus, you know, of what he wants to throw and what he wants to land. So that's the punch that I think is going gonna, is gonna to be a key for him, the straight right hand. You know, Gael Estrada is going to um, try to keep this fight on the outside. But at some point, I think, I think this is my opinion, I think Chalatito is just a bit too smart. He's too experienced to, to be kept on the outside for 12 rounds. And at some point in this fight, they're going to be fighting in the middle of the ring. Um, Chalatito is going to be looking to get Gal Estrada to slug it out with him. And that's what he wants. He wants him to slug it out with him. And he's going to try to back up Gal Estrada and make him fight his fight. And when he's doing that, um, look for the straight right hand to be a, a big part of what he wants to do. You know, um, I'm looking forward to seeing how Gal Estrada can handle the offensive outside of Chalatito because he is going to be looking to get that lead foot leverage. He will be looking to land that straight, that straight right hand. And he will be looking to um, to step around him and create those angles that I don't think get talked about enough. One thing Chalatito does better than probably any fighter in boxing, and I include Vasil and Pacheco, and people think I'm crazy for this, but just go back and really watch his fights. When he gets right up on you, when he gets right up on you, he does an amazing job of, of stepping around you to create those angles. Um, and he's not just throwing one punch, but he's throwing two punches, sometimes three. So it's it's very important if you're a guy with Charlotte that you don't allow him to do that. Um, so yeah, Chalatito beats Guy Ostrada pretty much by doing what he did in the first fight, by by getting that lead foot leverage, by landing that straight right hand that's been a, such a great uh, punch for him. You know, we saw in the Cali of Five fight what a straight right hand would do for him. And then like in his most recent outing against Israel Gonzalez, we saw that Chalatito still has the gas tank to go for 12 rounds um, against someone who is even younger than Guy Ostrada because Israel Gonzalez is 23 years old and Chalatito was put, put on a, a beautiful display of, of pressure and, 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 and counter uh, pressure and just inside fighting for 12 rounds against a younger fighter, a bigger fighter. And uh, so he's shown, he's shown this year, he's shown just in this calendar year alone that he has the ability to land that one devastating punch and he, he still has the ability to be a Chalatito of old and uh, fight you hard for 12 rounds. So you know, it's no secret that I'm picking him to win this fight. And I don't think much has to change because, like, like, like the lie that says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Make Guy Estrada have to make you adjust. And, you know, that's, that's, that's how I think Chelsea will be Estrada. So you guys can leave your comments down below. You can take the time to subscribe. But like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.